Hey everyone, it's Dr. Cranin here. Today we're going to continue with our web series focusing on CPAP alternative treatments for sleep apnea. Um, I think this is a very important topic right now with the global shortage of CPAPs. It's really hard to get one and we've got to be aware of what our alternatives are. Uh, so on, on that note, here today, I'm very happy to have uh, joined me, uh, Olivier Lazarel, the General Manager of Somnix Health. And we're going to talk about a very interesting uh, treatment for obstructive sleep apnea called INAP. So Olivier, welcome and uh, happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Crennan. I'm, I'm really glad to be part of that conversation. I agree with you. It's a very important topic to help patients find alternatives to CPAPs. So let's start off. I nap. Sounds like something sleep related with the nap in there. That's very clever. What does it actually, it's an acronym. What does it stand for? And where did the idea for I nap come from? Yes, um, yeah, I think it's a very cool name. INAP stands for intermittent negative air pressure. So you have the CPAP, which is a positive air pressure. So the N in INAP is negative air pressure. It's a very important difference. The idea is actually our uh, founder uh, and CEO, uh, Mr. Cheng Chu Chen, who's in Taiwan, but he used to be at Stanford as a student and then as an invited scholar. He was a OSA sufferer and he tried CPAP and failed CPAP. And uh, while he was at Stanford through his discussion with professors and other folks there, they had the idea of using negative pressure in order to stabilize the tongue and the soft tissues in the uh, upper airways in order to, to uh, uh, open the, the back of the, uh, of the tongue and the soft palate for uh, OSA patients. It seems like some of the best alternative to CPAP treatments have come from someone's own personal issues. I think that's where um, uh, nasal ENAP, uh, EPAP came from and uh, maybe the Excite OSA as well. Uh, so that's, that's an interesting story. Um, tell me about the science behind INAP. How, how does it work? Sure. So um, we um, imagine that the oral cavity being a, a kind of a, um, a close uh, volume of air, and we, we use a, a, a mouthpiece, uh, which is, and I'll present that more in detail after, which is a very comfortable um, oral interface that I I would say it's kind of a cross between a baby pacifier and a snorkel. Okay. And from that tube here that's sitting on top of the tongue, that creates some negative pressure. We have a tube uh, and, and a pump at the end. I'll present that later on. So what does it do? It actually uh, sucks the, the whole air out of the oral cavity. And as a consequence, your soft palate, your soft tissues and the tongue are pulled forward and upward and then stabilized. And once you create the, and you reach the correct negative pressure, the pump stops. So it's completely idle. As long as the patient can keep the, the, the mouth closed, right? And breathe freely through the nose, then the pump will stay idle and the upper airways are open on the back of the tongue and the soft palate. So I have described INAP to, people, I don't know if you'll know this reference as bizarro CPAP. So it's sort of like the yin to CPAP's yang where CPAP forces air down your airway to keep it patent. The INAP pulls your airway forward with negative pressure, helping to open it, open it that way. Now the intermittent part, um, air, the airway is more prone to collapse on inhalation. So is the INAP only giving the negative pressure on inhalation or is it through the entire phase, all the phases of respiration? So the, the INAP keeps the airway pressure all the time, but it's, um, again, it's really uh, dealing with the uh, pocket of air that's sitting in front of the tongue. So once that pocket of air has that negative pressure, 
there's a sensor that detects it and keeps it at that low level of pressure. It's almost like a suction cup. And it's like a vacuum. It's like a vacuum. That's exactly negative pressure is vacuum. Is it's kind of a more scientific way to um, to talk about vacuum. Yes. So the the device is still uh, checking that vacuum level of vacuum, but if it doesn't need to pump more, if the vacuum is correct, that means we have a good seal in the back and in the front. There's no need to keep pumping because it's a telltale for us that say, oh yes, the, the tongue is in the right position. The soft palate is also in the right position. Therefore, the upper airway are open. You know, therefore the patient, as long as he or she breathes through the nose, uh, have no, no obstruction from the upper uh, airways. So is the device, does it have like a fail safe if, it, if the, if the, Negative pressure gets disrupted; it can detect that, and will yes. re recalibrate. Yes. Okay, gotcha. it, it, okay, exactly. So that's the I in INAP, the intermittent, because most of the time, and we we call it seal time. Most of the time, it's idle because the patient can keep that negative pressure, that vacuum level. As soon as the sensor detects that there's a leakage, it triggers the pump, and the pump starts to pump again to reestablish that negative pressure. And we have an app that actually monitors that. So every morning the patient wakes up, the data are actually uh, exchanged from the, uh, the, the, the device to the app. And the, the patient can see you know, what, will, what was the total seal time and the total treatment time. So it's a way for us and for the physician also to tell and to coach the patient saying, hey, you know, you should try to reach 80% seal time. That means 80% of the time, the vacuum is at the right level. That means the tongue is well positioned. That means the treatment is efficient. Um, and also 80% of the time, the device is completely idle. So it doesn't emit any sound. It, it runs on battery. Actually, this is a device. It runs on battery, so it's very small. So it's about the size of my phone, as you can see, you know, it's about twice the thickness. Wow, amazing. So the, small. Yeah, it's very small. Uh, there's just a button to turn it on and, it turn, and to turn it off. And then, um, so the pump and the sensor and the batteries are on the, on the bottom part. And the upper part that's detachable is actually just a saliva container. And then what happened is that as you, um, um, uh, as you sleep with it, you know, it draws a little bit of saliva through the tube here. And the mouthpiece. Okay, so this is the whole thing, right? And so there's a little bit of saliva that's drawn through the tube. It's about a very flexible three, three feet tube. We have some uh, saliva container, which is like a, this empty part with a very absorbent, what we call dry pad. It's a, like a little pouch with some high absorbent inside that you mount into the saliva container. So you sleep with it. And once you're done in the morning, uh, the patient just open it and toss the saliva um, dry pad into the bin, the rest is completely clean. And then you would just have to run, disassemble and run all those parts through clear water and that's it. it takes like really two minutes at the end of the, um, of the night to clean it up. So very easy maintenance, very, very convenient and battery operated. That means you do not have to plug it into the wall to make it work. And I'm a patient myself, I'm using it and I go six to seven nights on one battery charge. Wow. So very cool. Very, what's your what's your seal percentage at this point? Well, you know, I've got some good nights where I'm at like 98%. Yeah. And I have some nights where I'm at 80 or something like that for okay. reason that I'm not sure why, you know, maybe <laughs> I'm moving a, a, around or something has happened, but uh, now my brain has been trained to use it. So I I don't even realize that the seal is not perfect, but my brain knows now how to reposition the tongue 
in order to recreate the seal. So you talked about your brain is trained for this. So it seems like there's a kind of a break in period, right? So how long do you think people need to give this a shot to, to get used to it and, and, and get to the good stuff? So to speak, that, that's a very good question. And as you know, uh, every patient is different, but I can give you some statistics. I would say for 50, a little bit more, maybe 55% of the patient, they get it from the first night, they have a good seal and they find it really, um, really comfortable. Uh, we need to help and to coach and train the, those other 40% of the, of the patient and we tend to say it might take up to a month for some patient to reach a good seal. And we give them some tricks. We, we, we help them with the, um, you know, few, few exercises. Uh, the first one we said, use it when you're awake, mm -hmm. like maybe an hour every day, you watching TV, you're reading a book, um, and then you have the, the mouse piece on, Turn it on, fill the vacuum, yep. and just breathe freely through the nose while yep. you're doing your. Uh, it's a your... desensitization technique. I use that a lot with CPAP users. As yes, well, exactly. Who are kind of anxious or nervous about yes. using it. So, well, so let's go back up a little bit. This is a, a cleared by the FDA. Correct. And so, who who can use this? Who's who? What indications does it have? It's, it's obstructive sleep apnea. And is it all comers or is it limited to mild, moderate or so, also potentially severe as well? Yeah, so we did receive our FDA clearance in May of 2020, about a year and a half ago for every severity of sleep apnea. That's very important to say. It works for um, mild, moderate, and severe. Um, we had patient up to you know, an AHI above 50 or 60, even per, per, per hour. Um, so it's, um, it, it, it's important to, um, to remember also that the condition is that the patient needs to be able to breathe freely through the nose. So that and, seems to be, you mentioned that a few times, that it seems to be absolutely essential for success. Obviously, yes, because remember, once you have the mouthpiece in, you have to keep the mouth closed. Right. You don't have to clinch it, but just keep the mouth closed. That kind of a uh, outer pedal of flaps will sit in front of your teeth and behind your lips, create a good seal, but you cannot really open your mouth because that would break the seal. So therefore, it is essential that the patient is able to breathe through the nose. Some patient, a lot of us, are mouth breather, but there's a way to retrain uh, someone to become nose breather again. Uh, there's few people who, for some reason, like a deviated septum or like chronic obstruction of the nose cannot really breathe through the nose. So unfortunately, those will not be, um, will not be able to, to use INAP. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, perhaps in some cases, uh, you could use things like nasal saline rinse and intranasal steroids to help open up uh, yes. the airway. Or I guess if you were really motivated to use INAP but had significant nasal obstruction, you could see an ENT and have a turbinate reduction or uh, septoplasty, something like that. Um, are there any other contraindications, if you will, reasons that people would not be a good candidate for INAP? Um, obviously, central sleep apnea, um, we are an OSA, obstructive sleep apnea treatment. And some, some patients have a combination of both. So that's why it's very important that they do like a serious sleep study with a, with a physician to really uh, confirm the, the uh, diagnosis of, of, of OSA, obstructive sleep apnea. Um, other than just being uh, able to um, breathe through the nose and keep the mouth closed. Those are the only, uh, I would say, condition for using INAP. Dentition probably, at least to a certain degree, comes into play here. If if you don't have any teeth, then that's correct. Okay, so and then are there any? If you have any uh, issues like periodontal disease or other, are there any other dental issues that might preclude you from 
being a great candidate? So having a not complete, but at least a set of keys, we, especially in the front, to help create the seal, even though the, so the material is very flexible and soft, kind of a cover the gums as well. So, and by the way, we have patients who use Invisalign, for instance, at night, and it's compatible with those type of uh, treatment as well. So um, we, we do have a patient who complain uh, of a little bit of a gum um, or frontis, uh, you know, a um, little bit irritation or pain, sometimes also the roof of the mouth that uh, because we have a negative pressure that's pulled from the, uh, from the end here. But that's actually lasts only a few days, I would say. That is something that after a week of using it is most for most of the patient it disappears. Uh, the most frequent effect that we see is over salivation. So all of over salivation happens again for a couple of nights, I would say not more. And after a while, that's what I mentioned, you know, you train your brain, your brain start to realize, okay, now I understand what that thing is trying to do. So let's rebalance everything. So that actually um, disappear after a few nights. Besides over salivation, which doesn't sound that dangerous, uh, not gonna probably get seriously dehydrated from that. Are there any potential risks or side effects from INAP? You know, um, we, we heard about some risk and side effect of CPAP, you know, and some come from the fact that we are pushing air inside people's body, inside their lungs. We're not pushing anything inside, so we're pulling um, air and a little bit of saliva. So there's no real risk of contaminant being brought into the patient system by the, mm -hmm. by the device. Um, all the components are, have been, have passed all the, you know, the, the, uh, the standard for uh, material in terms of um, allergy allergies or others is we kind of clear with that there's no problem with that and uh, it really is there's not more that i can think about of in terms of side effect i mean there's no air pushed into you know so the there's stomach a, no risk pushing. of uh, infection or getting allergens into your system because of the mechanism of action here is, is what you're saying correct yes and now one of the Potential risk for oral appliances for sleep apnea, another very common alternative to CPAP treatment is um, long-term um, tooth movement from the uh, physical forces on the teeth. Is, is that something that should be a concern with INAP? Compared to oral appliance, um, oral appliance uh, creates a number of problems, as you mentioned, gum and tooth movement, but also the TMJ issues. Yes. And that's because they're actually forcing the lower jaw into an unnatural position by really pulling it forward to sometimes a, a, quite a significant uh, amplitude. This device is very soft and just keeps your your uh, your mouth, the geometry of the mouth in its natural position. So there's absolutely no risk on the joint. Mm -hmm. And um, you don't have like to really bite hard on it. it you just need to, to keep it in, in between your front teeth. So no risk in terms of teeth movement. Um, I talked to several uh, uh, dentists and they haven't seen any problem of such sorts here. Gotcha, gotcha. You mentioned earlier, it's been tested in people with AHIs, I, I think you said into the 50s or 60s. Yes. Um, is there sort of a, a maximum AHI that uh, we would expect this to be effective for, or um, theoretically it, it should help a lot no matter how high your AHI? It, I think it will, uh, it will it will help, uh, of course, people with a high AHI might need something that is uh, more, uh, I mean, they might respond better to CPAP, mm -hmm. uh, especially if they want to go for an 80 to let's say a two or three in terms of AHI. Uh, the, the way our clinical studies have been designed is the, uh, the success 
uh, of the treatment is when the original AHI is divided by two and below 10. So for higher EHI, we might go down to an, a nine or a 10, and that's deemed as successful. But we're not gonna go down to a one or a two yeah. uh, in those cases. So you've got them solidly into the mild range, which the long-term health effects for mild sleep apnea are um, debatable, um, mixed evidence for issues there. So there's, there's a significant improvement is, is what you're looking at, getting them out of the more dangerous, moderate and severe zones. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a balance between um, efficiency, but also comfort. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I do believe that we're bringing to, to the, the patient community a very, very comfortable alternative to CPAP. You know, there's no mask, there's no, uh, you know, the strap around the head, there's no dryness of the nose or of the throat there's no noisy pump there's no long hose that prevents you from moving in the bed and thing like that it's something that's a very very comfortable and we it has been designed really with the uh, the, the the comfort of the the, the patient uh, you know in mind and still bringing some pretty solid effectiveness but maybe not as as good as as the CPAP could be because of course CPAP is uh, the preferred solution by most, yeah. but as we know by most physician, but maybe by not most patient. Actually, we a lot of our patient are failed, either failed CPAP patient or patient who just do not tolerate or do not want to use CPAP. Sure, which is very, very common, of course, yeah. So if people are interested in this, there is a, a rental program and then a, a purchase program um, what are the, what are the advantages and disadvantages to, to both of those programs? Sure. So we, we call it the, the membership. It's more of a subscription program or rental program, but it's more, think a, more about a lease. So the, it's really designed for convenience. So the patient can start using INAP from the very beginning at a monthly fee of $84, but what that $84 also includes is every quarter they receive at home a box with refills. So the consumables are the tube, a new tube, a new mouthpiece, and a set of a dry pad for three months. That included into the $84. Shipment is included as well. Um, after 24 months, they own the device. So the monthly fee drops from $84 to $29. And $29 is really the cost of the refills. Mm -hmm. They can stop at any time. A little bit like your cell phone uh, subscription. You say, hey, no, I don't want to use it anymore. You just stop it for us, just returning the equipment to us. And then we cancel everything. So it's almost risk-free for them. The uh, upfront payment, what we call also ownership, it's at a retail price of $999. Uh, that's for pay, really patients who don't like to be into a subscription program. They don't like to leave their like credit card. So they receive it uh, at home and they can try it for 60 days. We were at 30 days first, but we realized that patients uh, wanted to take a bit on more time to make sure they're successful with it. It's very important. And again, we want to be patient friendly. That's a long grace period. Friendly. That's 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 a pretty good deal. Yeah. Yeah. And at 60 days, um, before the, the end of the 60 days, they can still decide, oh, you know what? I don't think it's going to work for me for some reason. And then we, we said, okay, to send it back. We refund them everything but $100. $100 because of, you know, the restocking fees. And we have to discard everything that has touched the uh, saliva. So pretty much all those parts cannot sure. be reused. Or just That's just good. <laughs> I'm sure people are happy to hear that. Yes. Uh, yeah, but in the long run, the, the, uh, subscri the subscription program would be a bigger outlay than if you, if you bought it up front, but there are some um, advantages to it as well. Uh, right. If you don't have that uh, the, uh, 999. The 999 or the ownership, um, those are people who either don't want to be 
uh, cut into a subscription, or also people who are just using it as, you know, a travel CPAP or a travel treatment, I'm sorry, or they want to have an alternative when they go on camping trips. So they're not using INAP constantly, so they don't really need a quarterly refill box. And they buy, uh, they buy actually their refill or the consumable directly on our uh, website. Gotcha, gotcha. So from the sleep doctor standpoint, you had mentioned the app that tells you about usage and the uh, seal quality. And does the sleep provider get access to that as well? Yes, yes. So, um, so the every day uh, we record, we record the uh, the seal t- the treatment duration. Let's say seven hours. The seal time, let's say eighty percent. We also uh, partner with a certain company that makes oximeter, whether it's a ring oximeter or a clip oximeter, in order to record the ODI or oxygen desaturation index. That's a very good, I would say, proxy uh, to AHI to realize whether the treatment is efficient or not. All those data are uploaded into a secure cloud that the physician can have access. So the physician can follow the treatment of each of their individual patients and see how good or not as good as they wish the patient does with the treatment. So that allows for communication, a conversation between the physician and the patient and say, hey, uh, what's going on? Is there anything we can do? And also we have some tricks and some, some coaching that the patient and the doctor can either uh, um, communicate with the patient, or we can do it as well to help the patient achieve a better seal. Is there any thing a- adjustment that can be done? So with with CPAP, we're we're typically using APAP, and I have a protocol to titrate the machine to the best pressure for the patient from home. Is is there anything similar to that uh, with INAP, or sort of set it and forget it? So the our FDA uh, our FDA clearance uh, state that it's for the US for a one particular negative pressure, um, which is fifty three centimeter of, of water. So um, there's another capability. It's what we call the intensity, and that function is how fast uh, the pump is reaching that threshold uh, vacuum. Mm. So that is something that the physician can tune. Okay. Um, in other countries and other continents where we, we, we are commercialized, um, doctors can remotely change also the threshold, the, uh, the, the level of vacuum, and that they can increase that for patients who might need it. And there's some published studies about it, but that would be off label in the US. Cool. Okay. But the device is capable of doing that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, it's been a great conversation. I've learned a lot. Um, Olivier, thank you so much for for joining me. And I want to mention that Singular Sleep, we provide uh, telemedicine appointments in 47 states and prescribe INAP quite a bit. If you want to um, chat about whether you're a candidate for it and get a prescription, uh, please find us at singularsleep.com. Um, and we also offer the uh, subscription and outright purchase options for INAP and uh, have uh, a lot of experience with the device. And so uh, if, you'd li- if you'd like to find more, come find us on singularsleep.com. Uh, and uh, we would uh, be very happy to help you out. Um, Olivier, any uh, last word, anything coming down the pike that we should know about or uh, stay tuned and maybe there'll be a part two? Oh, well, we're still working on new complementary product that will go with the, uh, with the INAP. And, and our, our goal is really to create a coaching uh, program for our patient where INAP will be one of the tool of our toolbox, a very important tool, but they need to... We, we, we want to recreate a way for patient to have a, a refreshing sleep and wake up in the morning full of energy. And that comes with 
with a device like an INAP, but that comes with some exercise about the tongue, about breathing through the nose and having a better, you know, set up in their bedroom and all sorts of things all together will create a successful therapy for our patients. So we're thinking about ways we can help them. And, um, and then just if they want to know a little bit more about INAP and read more about it, they can also visit our website, which is www.inapsleep.online. Great. All right. Thank you so much. And uh, guys, look for some links at the end of uh, this video so you can get more information about INAP. Okay. Take Thank care. you, everyone. Thank Bye -bye. you, Dr. Bye-bye.